Neil Coyle, um, on the 1st of March, you reach an incredible milestone. You will have not had an alcoholic drink for a year. How does that feel? It's good. No, no alcoholic drink, but no hangovers for a year. And uh, for the first year since my early teens, I think, uh, without a drink, which is, you know, looking back is uh, an indication of a, of, a, of a broader problem. But no, it feels good. I feel uh, more energetic. I've saved money. I've saved time. I've lost weight, you know, I feel physically better. So it's it's been a positive step in what's been a difficult year. At your worst, how much were you drinking a week? So at the point I made the decision to stop, I didn't really feel I had a decision about stopping, frankly, because it was out of control. It was over 200 units a week. So, and I wasn't drinking every night, so it gives an idea. And I was never a day drinker, anything like that. And for me, it was almost entirely beer, beer and wine. So uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, do the mass. It's, it's a lot of units. It's a lot of uh, beer every evening, most evenings a week. They say that people with a drink problem only stop when they hit rock bottom. What was your rock bottom? Well, um, getting myself in trouble and I accept that it was, you know, I am responsible for the position I got myself into. Um, just to just remind people about so, that. So there were complaints about my behaviour and language uh, towards others in the parliamentary state, and I'm very sorry for for the uh, you know inappropriate language and behaviour. Uh, you know the the that shouldn't have happened. Uh, I was suspended by the Labour Party, and uh, you know, uh, but I, I'd made the decision to stop before there was a suspension or formal complaints were made. Actually, when when I heard. There was a concern. I sought to apologise and I made the decision to stop drinking at that point because I knew I wasn't in control. And I knew the only way for me was to stop altogether. Uh, 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 and initially, um, you know, my thinking was I need to stop for a period. I didn't think even then I wasn't thinking I need to do this full stop. Uh, I felt at that point, if I could get to Christmas, that would have been a pretty solid achievement. The longer I've done this, the easier it is to realise that drinking has been a problem for a longer period time in my life and also that the only way to keep myself uh, safer and healthier is to stop altogether permanently. So um, just to remind people you were suspended from the Labour Party for an incident involving a, a British journalist who has a Chinese mum over some racist remarks that you made in the bar. Is, is that accurate? It's British Chinese, and I accept I use inappropriate language. It's you know, and I, I and I remain very sorry. And uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a horrible situation to be in. I left, you know, somebody left the conversation with me feeling upset and offended by what I'd said. And there's just no excuse to be in that position. I shouldn't have uh, allowed that to happen, and I should have been clear that I was very sorry at the time. I tried to apologise in the evening, and. Um, it wasn't believed that it was sincere. And, and that's, you know, I, I have to take that on the chin and uh, I hope that my uh, actions and repeat apology over the last 12 months is, 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 uh, is, is seen as sincere and we can move forward. As a result of that instance, you were banned from the bars on the parliamentary estate? So yeah, I got a, a letter from uh, the sergeant, I'm saying six, six of the watering holes in Westminster. Uh, that isn't all of them. And because I'd made the decision that I wanted to stop and I needed as much support as possible in achieving that. And I was worried, I was, from the start, I didn't believe I would be able to do this. The dependency was strong. I, you know, I was drinking a massive, a ridiculous quantity that was very harmful to my health. And um, so I asked for all of the. So there is uh, uh, there's one called the smoking room, which is a bar. That was my favourite one. <laughs> Only MPs. Could I didn't go want to say one. that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've outed yourself. But the, but you know uh, that wasn't on the list because that under the parliamentary cl uh, classifications that counts as a cafe. I thought, okay, I think that'd be news to people drinking there. But but you know I asked for it to be all venues and for a lot, uh, you know a, a a strong enough period to give me the best chance of not. Uh, you know, uh, breaking my abstinence, um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a it, the ban passed in August. I'm allowed in everyone I've been back in. They have zero percent bottles, and I'm keen that they get a zero percent on the pump. Do you think there is there any indication? I think we're going to win that. Yeah.
It's a campaign to, uh, it's, it's underway. <laughs> Do you think there should be as many bars on this day, or actually, well, well actually? I think it's a, it's a legitimate question. I'm not in the, uh, the first ever Labour MP for Bermondsey did campaign for no bars in Parliament. I'm not in that uh, mindset. I think actually the social side of networking is really useful, and the vast majority of people don't have uh, that predisposition to uh, to drink too much. That, that inability to stop drinking is is doesn't affect everyone, and uh, it's just those who, like myself, have that predisposition who end up in an unhealthy situation. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say that they need to be stopped. And then of course you'd end up well there are restaurants as well. And if if you want MPs to stay late for votes, then there need to be food outlets and other places. So I'm I'm you know I think I. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be back in the Labour Party soon. I don't think I'd be making any friends of other colleagues if I started calling for all the bars to be shut down in Parliament. <laughs> Why should the Labour Party have you back? Um, well, look, I, uh, I won a seat for the Labour Party and my track record actually is representing an incredibly diverse constituency and I think uh, doing it well. The you know, the response from constituency organisations when the news broke and, and allegations were made, uh, you know, I had the Somali group, I had the Afghan group, I had... An I bet Jeremy group. Corbyn could say all these things. Uh, I'm sure he could. The difference between us is he's never apologised. So, and, and uh, I, you know, I, I, I remain, I, I'm horrified that I left someone upset, not least because, you know, I have Chinese family. I lived in China for two years. I should have known better. And it's painful, it's, it's deeply humiliating that I didn't know that I was using a term that my Chinese family might use, but I shouldn't and I can't. And I know that now and it's, it's you know, that's a very steep learning curve. But you know, the, the track record I have in my constituency is bringing forward delegates within our CLP, but also as councillors. There's a, the first ever hijab wearing uh, Muslim woman councillor in Southwark is someone I signed up to the Labour Party. I've tried throughout my work in the constituency to bring forward more diverse candidates and I have it in my uh, agenda now to make sure we get more British Chinese uh, representation in, in the Labour Party. We have in my constituency at the Elephant, we have Chinese students and, and we have a lot of Hong Kong expats moving to this country because of what's happening in, in their country. So if Neil Coyle is readmitted to the Labour Party, he can guarantee you will not bring the Labour Party into disrepute again. 100%. Right, let's go back to alcohol. Let's explain. Well, I'm hoping not to. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Um, so let's have a look at how you have done it. Did you go to, do you go to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings? So the, the first thing for me was professional support to stop because I couldn't have done it without uh, medical help. And uh, that included, you know, seeing a doctor, but also medication to, uh, I think it's called Librium for a fixed period where it, it, it you know, it, it float above everything really. Um, that, and then there were other things, I can't remember the name of it, to stop cravings and deal with the side effects of stopping. So m medication was, was actually a really important part of this and I couldn't have done it without that support. So uh, that was, because that initial period is very much the hardest. And of course, it's where most people who try to stop fail because they don't have all of that support and you need it in place. And I was initially, the initial assessment in Westminster was I didn't qualify for uh, help to stop drinking. What, which, what, what assessment? By who? So, so there's a you know you go through a, a, a workplace assessment. There's a there's a support service for uh, the House of Commons. Yep, yep, one. Yep, yep. So for MPs and staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, employee assistance yes. program is the support, but um, and and you know it's I can laugh about it now, but they said because of the unresolved childhood trauma, they wouldn't treat me for the alcohol addiction until I dealt with that. And it's like, well. Um, it was incredibly awkward and took, and it was only because then everything became public, I think that things changed. So that initial private assessment was done uh, and support was refused. And then coming forward and, and, and everything being more public was like, okay, this is, we're gonna have to do this. Um, and then yes, I've had lots of, uh, I, I have to say, I mean, I, one of the reasons I was really, uh, it, it, you know, terrified is 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 a fair word, I think, in this sense. I was, I, I didn't, you know, I was petrified of what I was giving up. I felt I was giving up part of myself. I felt I was giving up a lifestyle and, and something that was integral to me. And I thought I would lose a lot through that. And actually family, friends and others who've come forward, one of my best mates who I didn't want to tell I was stopping, he stopped with me. 
and the the network support is colossal. But yes, I go to Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't think I'm meant to say that. I, I attend is one of the rules. I'm probably breaking a rule there. I'll get thrown out of that. But uh, you know, they the, the the fellowship is incredible. The tips, the practical support in how to avoid scenarios and, and not end up with situations where drinks are poured or given to you that you, you, you don't really want around you. And I've had this, you know, uh, uh, people saying, oh, just have one glass of champagne to really? celebrate something. Yeah. It's just one glass. <laughs> it's but like, yeah. well, yeah, but, but for me, one drink is, uh, you know, just a start. Um, and and I, it's, you know, I have to be absolutely... Uh, clear on that but things like you know taking if you go out to dinner making sure the wine glasses are taken away before someone accidentally pours one you know just simple little tips like that that come out of uh, sharing time and space with other people in a similar situation or who in many cases who've been through it they've done it they've achieved uh in in stopping and you know there's one in westminster that that more people should come to uh and there's uh, there's one i go to in bermondsey so and i'm very grateful for their you know, their time. I'd read a little bit about the um, the process. So we can talk about it in the abstract so you're not breaching any confidences, but <laughs> it's well known, the 12-step program. Yeah. Um, and I read that you have to apologise, I'm paraphrasing, to people who you may have hurt during your times drinking to make amends mm. without revealing anything you are uncomfortable with. I, I'm not on the steps. So, so I didn't think I'd make a year. So uh, I'm in the process of considering having a sponsor and going through the forms. I, I honestly, you know, when I started this, I didn't think it'd be permanent. The longer it's gone on, the better I feel, the, the more confident I am about, uh, and more resolute. You know, I've had, I have a heart condition, I have my daughter to think of, I, you know, I really have to stop permanently. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, I will be going through it. And yeah, that I, I'll, I'll be honest, there's, that's a long list. There's, uh, it goes back a long time. Final question. When I looked at the program, the 12 step program, there's a lot about God in there. Hmm. Have you had to find that higher cause? No, I, I've you're... always been Christian. So um, I don't, I'm not uncomfortable about the references to God that is part of uh, AA, but it's very clear you know, that God is as you see God. So that may be different for different people and it may just be a, 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 some higher sense that doesn't necessarily have even a religious connotation. So it's what which whatever people feel comfortable with. And I think actually, you know, knowing how hard it is to stop, getting yourself through that door to one of those sessions is the most important bit. And, uh, you know, anyone thinking it's about God, just it's not it's about you and it's about support to stop drinking if you know you need that and anyone can go who is committed to stopping there are people who come who haven't yet stopped there are people who come who are family members of others or well, there's Al-Anon for carers but uh, you know people are all you know in a different space there are people who uh, you know have stopped and have, have, have had a drink more recently and are uh, are seeking to stop again. So it's uh, it, it's it's there as a support network of people who share an addiction who want to support each other to stop. Thank you. It's an incredible achievement. I am pleased to have made a year, I hope, to, to sustain it, if I can say the word. Thank you for sharing all the details of that process and that journey. Well done. Thanks. <laughs>